in modern football today, so many aspects are taken into consideration for a team to perform at the highest level. And one of those aspects is actually data analysis. Um, today on Pitchside, we are talking football data, we are talking performance analysts, and who better than a qualified personnel in this field to join us and uh, have a discussion about that. Uh, Luis Ainebiona is a performance analyst with Express Football Club, and he joins us on Pitchside today. I'm um, happy to have you here on Pitchside. It's a pleasure. Uh, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As, uh, I thought I was going to have a very heavy British accent coming from you. No, no, no not at all, not I'm at surprised. All. You never know how long the way it could <laughs> come in. You yeah. are a graduate of football studies at Sonnet University in Southampton, yes. UK. Yes. How has Louis Ainebiona and football been related? Uh, as a brief background of how this whole football story started for you as Louis. Like, like most of the people, it, it goes way back, yeah. you know, yeah. as a child. Yeah. You know, you're just curious, you know, you're in the neighborhood, kids are kicking a ball and, you know, you want to try out something that the yeah. fellow kids are doing. Yeah. So I, I grew up in Chevando, yeah. spent most of my childhood there, you know, every after school, you know, just go around play. Then I happened to join an academy um, in Chevando, Chevando kids team with the likes of the coaches who are there, Steven Benya, coach Patrick. Um, then around P7 also happened to uh, play in Kampala Kids League and then you know high school I was in boarding so most of the time I didn't have time to play but then around my vacation of Form 4 I happened to go to Edgar's Football Academy. I have to say I really improved a lot because you know the whole like I think we used to do everyday training then went to Form 6 in Amiliango College you know we just play inter-house, inter-class but you know the, the love for the sport really grew then after I went to Macquarie University Business School, yes. um, happened to train with the university team, but of course books were really... Concentrated more on books. Though. Yeah, they were tight. And you know, parents having that thing of, please, you know, balance or first leave football and concentrate. So yeah. And then luckily enough, my, my mom being very supportive along the way, ever since, you know, childhood, you know, she took me to all these academies, yeah. put a lot of money, bought me boots. Um, she got to hear of a friend who referred her to a university fair, the UK one. Okay. And then they told me, oh, you can check it out. You never know there could be courses, you know. You could do. Yeah. So, luckily enough, I reached there and there is a university which had football studies, football studies and business. I was like, God, I think this is a sign, you know. Yeah. Things happened so quickly. Yeah. yeah. Then I was in Southampton. I got done with a degree, very happy. And now I'm here working with Express. Yeah, you've given me a very, very interesting, um, you know, background of how you've come up until today. And probably to parents out there, just how important is it for them to actually um, trust their kids and let them do what they want to do at, their, at a younger age? You know, um, I must say we are a very conservative country in that we believe, you know, only education at most sciences are the thing. But... Why, why should we believe so, you know? And we are seeing so many stars right now who are into the football realm. And believe me, say, we have the richest, the richest people in the world are sportsmen right now. Yep. No doubt about that. So for me, I believe once you invest in anything, trust me, the returns will come. It will take time, but the returns will surely come out. And I must say, parents out there, please support your kids in everything that they do. Invest in them. Let's move to the part where you say, you, 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 you are told of an opening um, of, to try and apply yeah. and actually go to Solent University. Yes. Um, how is that process in a nutshell and um, how is it when you arrived there? Well, actually, the process was, was really quick because it was just a matter of getting my results, uh, the, the MOOBs results and then of course plus A-level results and then went ahead, used an agency here to apply applied for the visa, got the visa, everything was pa, 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 real quick and yeah. Off you went. Off I went. Now when I reached there, yeah. <laughs> of course, really big cultural shock, you know, like, yeah, like and then when you reach there, people are open, people, it, you know, it's a different world out there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It was a good experience to be honest. I, I can't um, say I, I, otherwise. For someone out there who wants to actually go and do football studies at, uh, you know, any of those universities yeah. um, and they are not on a bursary or scholarship. Yeah. Um, I 
I mean, I, I, I would love for you to break down those finances for someone to know. Yeah. Um, probably an estimate of how much money you spent for you to complete your degree. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah. I, think, I think it's, it's every UK university yes. when you're doing a degree. Yes. Um, annual fees is like 10 to 11,000 pounds um, per year. That, that, that is the, the fees. Just the equate it to UGX. The UGX would be approximate. It would be like 50, okay, 55 million. That yeah. is annual fees a year. Then the accommodation comes in, yes. and when you go to accommodation, it's normally usually it's usually nine nine thousand. Nine thousand pounds. Yes, that's annual. That's forty-five million. Yes, approximately. Yeah, it's really expensive. So you can say uh -huh. hundred ten twenty million for, for one everything year. in one year. You would need. 120 million about Ugandan shillings. Yes. For one year. Yes. So, same so in three years, it's 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 around 300 yeah. 300 million, 360. So, Louis, I for you to attain your football studies bachelor's degree. Yes. You spent upwards of 300 million yes. Ugandan shillings. Yes. For three years in the UK. Yes. Bro. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. But like we've been talking about, it's, it's an investment. Every investment will bring returns later on. Um, let's move to the studies itself. Yeah. Uh, wh what does uh, the football studies entail? There's quite a number of course units. There's coaching in football. There's elite youth development. There's football analysis. There's food and nutrition. Yeah, the psychology in yep. sports. Yep. We had a, a course unit which was tackling football. It was business, you know, but how to manage, you know, a business, but in the football. In the football aspect, yeah. yeah. So where does um, the data analysis and performance analysts part come, come in? Come in yeah. Now, like I've said, there's a course unit on analysis. Because on the course unit, they'll first give you the criteria on how to, yes. to draft a, uh, an analysis report. Yeah. So then again, you go into the group work, you know, you analyze the game, you do the tallies, the crosses, all these other things, other things, and then you come up with a whole, a whole report. Okay. All right. So um, I know that you had a bit of a football stint uh, when you were in the UK. Yeah. Uh, you were playing in the Nan League. Yeah. So, so Sunday League football falls under Nan League. But, but honestly, you will find kids who have gone to really good academies, be it Chelsea, be it you know where Southampton, be it, be it everywhere. Yeah. yeah. But it was really good 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 times um people think <laughs> when i talk of nandi people think oh no, come on that is you know but but i would say you'd literally take players from here and they would still play nandi football it is that competitive yeah. all right so um we've had a very long chat about the uk let's come back here home um you you, you got done with your education uh, why did you decide <laughs> to come back home and um when you came back how was it as well yeah um the coming back home a bit was of course visa issue uh, <laughs> UK is not my own place but yeah, yeah. it's good I'm here because I mean we have to get knowledge and bring it down here where we've yeah. come we have to also develop this sport yeah. you know here so of course the transition of leaving the UK and coming to work here and being here it's it's been a tough one yeah I must say yeah. trying to implement something that is quite modern it and not here. appreciated yes. it it is really tough yes. you, you will not find enough equipment to use and all these other things you have to put in your resources sometimes it's been a a bittersweet experience you joined express in 2020 you've been part of the technical team that won the uganda premier league the sekafa kagame cup in your first season by the way yeah um even though last season had its uh you know flaws and all how has it been at express football club again i'll use the word bittersweet yes. <laughs> <laughs> because that, that's all that's the whole ugandan football experience yes. first of all i have to uh, be thankful and appreciate the opportunity that I got yep. because not many people will come and go and work with a top club like you know Express Football Club. Yes. Getting to work with people who are a bit older than me, <laughs> there was a really big age gap. Yes. Um, and sometimes actually I felt like, wow, how am, I, how am I going to approach the head coach? How am I going to approach the assistant coach to talk with them? Yep. And then also I wanted the coaches to really hold me as a baby because i was young I, and i i kept on telling them that i'm a young person here i've come to learn please 
uphold me with your hands, you know, and I'll be happy to work along. Yeah. It's been a bittersweet experience yeah. uh, and it's definitely a work in progress. I'm going to ask you a very, very obvious question. Ideally, what's in the day-to-day -day of a performance analyst at a football club? We have three things in football analysis. Yes, yes. <laughs> so there's, there's the, the pre-match analysis, yes. or the live match analysis, and then there's the post-match analysis. Yeah. So pre-match is, is opposition analysis. For example, if we were playing Villa yes. over the weekend, I would go ahead and do research about them, yeah. uh, how they play, their formations, their style of football, you know, which players are available, which players are you know, injured, you know, how have they been playing for the last three games, yeah. and then I would make a report. So that yeah. is the pre-match. And then with the pre-match also, you can look at how the, the players of Express have been, you know, performing yeah. during the training. Uh, yeah, leading. that is the pre-match. Then live match. So we have like a criteria, it's like a table yes. where you have, of course, first half and second half. You have like crosses from the left and right. You have passes, forward passes, you know. So with, with these things, of course, you have complete and incomplete. If yes. they've made an incomplete pass or complete pass or, down. yeah, complete cross, incomplete cross. Then you have how many times you've lost possession or won possession. Yeah, so that is what it would entail. That's so with the post match, of course, I would get footage, yeah, then take screenshots of like moments in the game where I feel we would have done better, yeah. then write a full report, and then by Monday or Tuesday it would be ready for the coaches. For the whole game? Yes, for okay. the whole game, yeah. Uh, how important is data and football analysis in a game, preparing for a game? Just give it a percentage. In terms of percentage, actually, I would put it at 70. 70 because yeah. you're dealing with someone, of course, who has, who has the football knowledge. They'll, they'll give you the stats with the interception and all the things, but then also they, they know how the other team is playing, you know. So there's the formation, then the style of football. The other things would come in later, let's say, the food and nutrition, the strength and conditioning, the you know, co coaches' tactics. Like I said before at the very start, I've met people in this industry. Yes. These analysts have been there, but I think they haven't been appreciated. And, and it's tough. And, and I must talk on behalf of all these people. Exactly. We, we haven't felt appreciated because people think maybe we are passing time. My plea to all the clubs out there, please welcome football analysis. It, it is a big thing now. Whether you're selling a player, you really need stats of players and their whole background data. So. I know that you run an academy, Kampala Saints. Yes. How did this academy dream come? Um, how did you start it? And why did you start it most importantly? When, when I realized I couldn't continue with the football career thing anymore, yeah. I was just like, you know what? Let me just give other people hope. Let me give other people a dream. And I happened to start the academy in 2018. Yes. I think it was around August. Mm. You know, I'm glad some people came along. I have my former coach when I was young, Coach Patrick. He came along, took the project over. I was still studying. I'm really grateful to Coach Patrick Kasozi. Yes. That's how the whole academy dream came about. It, it's not easy juggling both things. And sometimes, actually, it, it, it's when I get resources that I run the academy. How has that experience been? Because with academies, we are not structured that much. I know the Federation has been trying to make sure that they register academies and uh, give them licenses and um, you know the academies must register the players that yeah. they have or the kids that they have um, how has that process been for you um, especially with uh, working with underprivileged kids most of the academies we have here are honestly working with less privileged kids yeah. but the, the registration bit is really quite tough but it's a process like I said it's not easy you're going to find kids who are entitled. But yeah, as we go on, I think we need to train children to be grateful, thankful, and honest. And these are things we need to implement in our academies. I need so, yeah. to ask you if, uh, if, if there's that challenge that you've gone through that you feel has to change in the academies in Uganda, the academy setup. We have, should I call them moles? These are people who are really spoiling the games. Let's say in my academy I have a kid A. A kid Peter. A kid Peter. Peter comes to my academy. I, I train this kid or I am with this kid for like let's say two years. Yes. But along the way maybe he's demotivated, demoralized and he's, not, he's demoralized maybe because someone just sneaked in or found this kid playing somewhere and started talking to this kid. Most of the kids are, are, are less privileged. 
so that the, they would want they could easily be exploited. swayed yeah and manipulated before you know it peter has switched peter has switched and peter won't tell you because peter fears to open, coach to be open to, be open to, to me so it is okay a child can switch from academy a to academy b or wherever but as long as there is communication and even if you're admitting a child to your academy ask them about their background where did you come from which academy did you come from what did you do what did you learn and so also, that you also know where to start from so let's move to uh, what's coming up you have a new season coming up um what are some of those things that you're looking forward to um in conclusion i'm, yeah. I'm going into my third year yes. uh, into express yeah. i'm still learning yeah. on the job mm. but i think to be honest yeah. uh, we are rebuilding yes at express football club last season was really tough and of course things are not going to just change uh, abruptly i can't promise that because i'm not <laughs> in the administration but but with the way things are we are going to take things slowly we are going to rebuild any last words louis Ainabiona? again um let's embrace football analysis and let's embrace any other modern day science or technology in sport yes it goes a long way beat all these you know things strength and conditioning food and nutrition oh how could i forget psychology psychology is the biggest thing because players need to be motivated to work so let's embrace anything that's really going to take us or push us to the next stage you know all right thank you very much for coming through thank you very much for hosting me yeah it's been a pleasure yeah. and i'll do this anytime <laughs> my brother. all right uh that was uh louis Ainebiona, performance analyst at express uh football club um i'm going to request you people as always please uh look out for pitch side on youtube look for pitch side with peter tabu uh we are here to tell the untold story if you like and we shall keep doing that keep it locked subscribe cheers